Hey everybody, this is Chase Bryant, sitting down here with countrymusicbrox.net. All right, we're here with Chase Bryant, and you recently released your new single, A Little Bit of You. Tell us a little bit about the song and how it came to light. Well, it was, uh, it was the last song we cut for this record, uh, my first record. It's not out yet, but um, it was the last song we cut. It, it, um, I was, it was kind of one night I was, I was coming home off the road, and, and I would kind of thought, you know, there was a girl I was kind of talking to at the minute. It was kind of that, that instant of, of uh, you know, needing somebody so bad or wanting somebody so bad, and, you, and you'll do anything you can to make it happen. And, and um, so it's that kind of instant uh, put the key in the, uh, in the ignition and drive as fast as you can to get there, and you're not stopping. So her dad might hate you for it. But, um, no, that's how a little bit of you happened. Last song for the record, and um, it was just an easy choice for us to go for a second single of that, you know, so. And I know you released your EP last fall, and you have your debut album on the way. So, what can you tell us about the new music ahead? Well, the you know, if, I mean, for me, the album. I'm, I'm a songwriter, you know, and I, and I love songs. And I mean, the first the first single was kind of a you know that kind of party anthemic you know thing, which was taken on back. And then, you know, for me, the rest of the record is just kind of a roller coaster full of like you know the ups and downs, the heartbreak songs, the the Marion songs, the the one that you just want to party to or the one you may want to cry with, you know. So I just wanted it to be a vision of me. And if you said, who's Chase Bryant, put the record in and you could, you could hear it the whole thing, my whole life, you know, so. And I know it looks like you've been pretty hands-on with your debut album because you're co-producing it. So what's that been like? And do you have a favorite memory uh, recording for this album? Well, you know, I, there was a guy named Nick Budo who I played, who played drums um, on all my demos when I moved to town. And Dave Labriere used to play for John Mayer, great bass player. And, my buddy Derek, my best friend Derek George, um, when I when I got signed at Broken Bow, they asked who I wanted to make my record with, and they said you can make it by yourself or make it with somebody else. And I chose Derek George because we were best friends, and he knew me in and out from 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 music to personal life. And the drummer and the bass player, I I had played with them for years, you know, in town and just you know in the studio and whatnot. So I made the record with a bunch of great friends and made the record with the guys that musically I was so inclined to. And I think that's my favorite memory is just making a record with people who know me and who understand me as a person. So that was the biggest and best memory I'll ever have. You know, I'll, I'll never be able to, uh, I'll never be able to, you know, go back and recreate it, you know, but it was just, it was awesome. That's nice, that's special. And you have a busy summer coming up. You're hitting the road with country superstar Tim McGraw. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that and what are you looking forward to most being out on the road with him? Ah, uh, Tim's my, I mean, he was an icon, you know, of course. I mean, from, from Indian Outlaw to Red Rag Top to, I mean, just every other song he ever had, I mean, uh, you know, the thing for me is just, just knowing that somebody like at his level chose to listen to my song or my music or my record and, and, and take me on tour. I, I'm just looking forward to learning and going out and, and, and trying to better my craft by watching his, you know. And um, his fans are rabid and they're great and just awesome people. And, and Tim's, I mean, he's just such a great guy. And, and um, I mean, I, I nearly worship the ground he walks on. I mean, because just, he's just so good. I mean, and, and not only that, he's just a great guy. And, um, you know, glad to call him a friend and, and glad to be out on the road with him. So um, it's going to be a blast, Shotgun Rider Tour this summer. So we start next week, so it's going to be good. That's awesome. And uh, for folks that haven't seen you yet perform, how would you best describe your set out on tour? Uh, energetic. If you, uh, if you, uh, you might get tired watching me because I'm all over the place. I'm always moving. I'm always doing something. You're probably going to see a lot of stupid guitar playing faces and some stuff like that. But um, I'm just... Um, you know, I mean, it, for me, it's just a, it's just a fun show to be a part of, and and um, I'm, I, you know, the band's, it's, it's cool. It's just, it's fun. It's, it's, uh, it's rapid. It's fast. You know, so we'll see what happens. Very cool. And speaking of being out on the road, what is one thing from home that you have to have with you? Oh man, my dog. My dog's always on the road with me. Harley, my bulldog. Um, he's always on the road with me. He's like my kid or something. You know, so he's always out. He's always out hanging with us. And guitars, of course, clothes, sure. hair gel. <laughs> Gotta have a gel. So, yeah. And as a country newcomer, you've already had some pretty amazing moments. But what's still, what's one thing that's still on your country music bucket list? Uh, probably to either do something with Shania Twain or George Strait. You know, that's, that was pretty big. Keith Urban is probably another one for me too. But I mean, those three are probably, you know, to do something in, in that element with those guys. I mean, of course, we all dream of winning ACM awards and CMA awards sure. and everything else. But uh, you know, to do something with some of your heroes as well would be great. So I've already crossed Tim McGraw off the list, so that was fun. So, there you go. Yeah. And if you could re-record a song from any genre other than country, what song would you pick to put your Chase Bryant twist to? Well, I actually did one recently. Um, I re-recorded Taking It to the Streets uh, from Doobie Brothers, 1976. But if I had to do another one, it would probably be Please Come to Boston, Dave Loggins. Yeah, that would probably be another one for me.
And finally, country music is consistently evolving and growing. In your opinion, what do you think sets it apart from any other genre? Somebody asked me one time in a plane, they said, oh, you play country music? I said, yes, ma'am. And, and she said, oh, she goes, country music is never what it used to be. And I said, well, it wasn't what it used to be back then. I mean, back then it, it was evolving and country music has evolved. I mean, if you look at the people, I mean, you know, of course, you know, you got the greats. I mean, there's Florida Georgia Line, there's Luke Bryan, there's Waylon Jennings, there's Don Williams, there's Chet Adkins. I mean, nobody ever said you had to wear a cowboy hat. They just said you had to tell the truth. And I think country music has always told the truth. And look, people have been riding in trucks since trucks have ever evolved and, 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 and people still fall in love. I mean, country music is country music and always will be. It's an evolving genre and it's the best genre there is. So. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. We look forward to seeing you out on the Shotgun Rider Tour and best of luck this summer. Thank you very much.